Hello fellow history buffs, today we will be discussing a destination close to home for us Sips. Akron is inseparable from the rubber industry, and it isn't a reach to say that rubber built Akron. Well, our topic today was also built by the rubber industry. Hi, I'm Robert Castello, and in this episode, we will be discussing historical Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens. Oh, and before you ask, Stan Hewitt was not a person, it's just the name of the building. The name loosely translates to Stone Quarry in Old English. But before we learn about the building itself, it's important we discuss its owner, Franklin A. Cyberlink. Franklin was born an Ohio native in 1859, being born just around 15 miles away from his future mansion. When Franklin was six years old, his family moved to Akron, where he went to public school. Then, after going to college for two years, he joined his father's agriculture machine manufacturing company as a secretary and treasurer. While there, he married Gertrude Penfield and had four of his seven children, John, Irene, Willard, and James. In 1898, Franklin eventually moved past his father's business and co-founded Goodyear with his brother Charles. As they raised Goodyear, Franklin also found himself with three more children, Gertrude, Grace, and Franklin Jr. Grace, however, wouldn't make it past infancy. Now seeing a crowd of children and a successful company, Franklin knew he wanted a new home, but not just any home. When discussing it with his wife, they wanted a large home to raise their many children, house extended family, and create a venue for entertainment and events for the greater Akron area. So in 1910, the family started purchasing land just west of Akron. By completion, the estate had as many as 3,000 acres. Once the land was secured, Franklin hired three people for the overall design of the manor. The architecture was left to Charles Schneider, landscape design would fall on Warren Manning, and Hugo Huber would be in charge of interior decoration. In 1912, the Cyberlings took a trip to England with their architect Schneider to gather inspiration. Once all was said and done, there were three structures that the Cyberlings loved. Compton Wynats, Aquell's Manor, and Haddon Hall, all of which are very classic and expansive estates with Haddon Hall dating back all the way to the 11th century. Once they returned from their trip, each Cyberling was asked what they would like in their manor. Each had their preference, like a music room, pool, or office. After that, construction began. Then just three years later, interior designer Hugo got to work. The Cyberlings wouldn't make the job too easy, of course, as Franklin and Gertrude were disagreeing on what kind of furniture to get. Gertrude wanted more antique furniture to fit the aesthetic of the manor, while Franklin pushed for more comfortable furniture. They ended up compromising on modern furniture that was made to look antique. So then, Hugo frequently visited New York City with Gertrude in order to find furniture and decorations. Hugo would also go with the Cyberlings to England to find furniture over there as well. While this was happening, Warren Manning was putting his creative flair in the yard of the estate. He created various kinds of scenes across the lawn that all came together in a unified design that highlighted the elevated view across the Cuyahoga Valley. Then, in 1915, the Stan Hewitt Manor was finally completed. The manor was massive, with 65 total rooms. That was 18 bedrooms, those being 5 guest, 5 family, and 8 servant bedrooms. Then there were 23 bathrooms, most of them connecting to a bedroom. There were 14 full bathrooms and 9 half. Those servant bedrooms would come in handy too, as Stan Hewitt had around 23 people hired as domestic staff. The siblings moved in without notable issue, and Stan Hewitt was under official use. Only one kid was left to grow up inside of it though. Franklin Jr. was the youngest of the Cyberling children, as his next oldest sibling was 9 years older than him. But he didn't grow up lonely. Most of his siblings lived in the house with him, and he always had the serving staff to take care of him as well. It was also around this time when the Cyberling family dove headfirst into philanthropy. It has been said that Franklin took care of his workers, and it was well shown as he helped establish Goodyear Heights, a neighborhood specifically for his factory workers, and Fairlawn Heights for his white collar workers. But he didn't stop there. Franklin believed that true prosperity only came through the enlightenment and improvement of every citizen. It was this belief that pushed him to create fair housing, build hospitals, improve transportation, preserve green spaces, and fun art and culture programs. You can see the remnants of his philanthropic work even today. He was the founder of the People's Hospital, now known as Cleveland Clinic Akron General, and the Summit Metro Park System. The family would also open their home to the public for fundraisers, meetings, musical performances, and lectures. The family recognized that the house was there doing parts of the community and should serve the community as designed. That didn't stop the family from using it either. 
Stan Hewitt was the site of Franklin's first son's wedding and the birthplace of Franklin's first grandchildren. So, did you know that Stan Hewitt was heavily tied to Goodyear? If you want to learn more about history, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, or subscribe to us right here on YouTube. All at ZTV 5 Minute Flashback. If you're interested in exploring more of Stan Hewitt, check out Class Cancel's awesome video using the link in our description. Thank you for watching and keep learning. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV. Make media make a difference.